Hi all, welcome to HANA Administration Training. This is your trainer Parikshit from ProSenso Trainings. Today it will be formal day for starting our training on SAP HANA Administration. So before we start, let me actually give you a background of uh, about myself. I have a vast experience on HANA administration and have almost over 12 and a half years of experience in IT industry. So the basic requirement in order to proceed with our HANA administration is having basic computer knowledge, primarily server operating system like Linux, Red Hat Linux and SUSE Linux. If you have that, it is great. If you do not have that, not a problem. It is not a mandatory skill set. But if you have it, it's it'll be an added advantage for you. And if you have additional knowledge on any traditional database, it'll be another add-on for your skill set because it'll help you in order to understand the functionality and what difference is HANA making when compared to your traditional database. In today's session, we'll be discussing on introduction on SAP HANA and its release strategy. So before we start, I assume that you all have uh, already gone through what HANA is about and a little bit about what is this HANA. But for me, whenever we start or whenever we plan for learning SAP HANA, First of all, we need to learn what is basically HANA. What is the need of solutions like HANA? Also, we will discuss about what type of solutions is SAP offering with solutions like HANA, which is very important to understand because we as administrators are responsible for HANA administration, which also means that we might need to work on different deployment scenarios, which also refers that we should know about different solutions which may, which we may come across in customer's place. So first of all, we need to understand what is HANA all about. So HANA stands for High Performance Analytics and Appliance. Just by understanding what full form of HANA is, We need to understand that what is this high performance analytics and why do we need these kind of solutions? So first of all, let's understand what is this high performance and need of solutions like this. If we can get answer to these small points, it'll be easy for us to understand the need of generating solutions like HANA. So in order to understand what is this high performance, let's take an example. So in order to understand uh, this uh, high performance analytics, let's take an example of a new organization and name it as a XYZ Company Limited. So the primary requirement for any organization is to identify a solution to run their business. Help them in order to run their day-to-day -day activities. Or we can say that they need a solution to run their day-to-day -day transactions. Solutions which are offered to these organizations are OLTP solutions. OLTP stands for Online Transaction Processing. Online Transaction Processing Solutions, where the main purpose of the system is to perform transactions. Remember, 
Processing transaction is the main purpose, but not the only purpose. Because analytics and analysis is always a secondary requirement, since unless we do not have any data in our system, we cannot perform any analysis. The reason is, whenever the OLTP solutions are built, irrespective of softwares used for developing those solutions, the main thing which are performed are, we design a database. Remember what I'm saying, we design a database. On top of it, we also design, or I would say, there's a requirement of designing a, of designing an interface. That is, interface can be of a, a GUI or maybe a CLI, graphical user interface or command line interface, which is generally used in order to perform transactions. On top of it, there is a requirement of developing some reports. Now, what is the need of reporting in this OLTP solution? In order to understand the need of reporting in OLTP solution, let's take an example. Suppose customer places an order and the order is confirmed. Once order is confirmed, we want to deliver order to the customer. But before committing on delivery, we need to check stock availability of the material. Because without knowing stock of a material, we cannot commit a delivery date. So when we are talking of checking of stock of, uh, of stock of a material, we are actually doing nothing more than running a report within a system. So in a simple way, we can say that OLTP system consists of reports and definitely those reports could be used for analysis purpose. So we know that we have a solution which can help a business to run its day-to-day -day transaction, execute report and run analysis. But if that is the case, then why a company always looks for an exclusive solution which is specifically designed for analysis, which are also known as the OLAP solutions and popularly known as a data warehousing solution, where the only purpose is to perform analysis. See, we know that until unless there is a drawback or limitation in an existing solution, we don't look for a new solution which is a general human tendency. So what are those limitations? We need to know that, right? So that we can understand the requirement of uh, generating solutions like OLAP solutions. So most of us know that OLTP can be used for analysis, whereas it cannot be used for analysis of large volume of data, like two or three years. Generally, in most of the organizations, companies, you know, you, you'll observe that companies will have only six months of data to, to do analysis in their all in their all TP sort of systems. So what will happen if we perform any large volume of analysis in our OLTP system? So generally, the performance will be low, or I would say rather that the performance will be very, very low. You can take an example that if you go to a bank or maybe you use your mobile banking or internet banking and you ask for a statement of maybe like six months or a year, you'll get it immediately. But the moment you ask for a statement of maybe like six years or five years, you'll not get it immediately, which is because our OLTP systems are not prepared for performing large volume based analysis. So in order to overcome these solutions or limitations, there were OLAP solutions which were designed. So generally, whenever there is a need of running large volume of reports in any organization, the solutions which are offered 
is a OLAP solution. But before we start learning about OLAP solution, we need to know what is the reason behind why OLTP was not able to perform large volume based analysis. Because knowing a problem is not good enough, but to know reason for the problem, that is most important. Because until unless we don't know the problem and we don't know the reason for the problem, we will never be able to overcome the limitations. So the reason why OLTP database was not able to perform large volume based analysis was its database design. Because as I mentioned that whenever a database is designed, the first thing which is needed is a design of database is prepared. See, database is not just about going and building a table, it is about designing. And whenever a database is designed, we need to follow certain data models in OLTP solutions. We use certain data models which are needed for efficient transaction processing, which is actually the primary requirement. So whenever we design a database, we need to consider so many factors which we are actually not really bothered about because here we are not designing a database. But what, what we need to actually realize one factor that during designing of database, we need to apply normalization so that we can achieve redundancy of data and reduce duplicacy. The meaning of it is OLTP database is highly normalized. Now what normalization actually does? Normalization actually does nothing more than decomposing of your table because decomposing you know by doing decomposing of our table by applying normalization we end up having multiple tables which is the primary primary requirement to have a database which which actually makes a database suitable for running online transaction processing so in order to achieve normalization we apply different set of normalization Right. We might have heard about, have heard about of uh, different normalizations which we, act, which we actually apply in our systems like first normalization or second, third, fourth, fifth and BCNF and several other normalizations which are actually available. So when we have a data spread it across multiple tables, we know that whenever we want to read data from multiple tables, we access data using joints, which also means that accessing data from multiple tables will definitely take a lot of time. So obviously it'll have impact on performance. So performing analysis is not suitable for OLTP solutions, which is why we came up with a solution like OLAP. So the area of concern in the design is, the, is actually the design of the database, but not actually the database. So we don't change the database, but we actually change the design in our OLAP solutions. So the main thing which are actually performed when designing a OLAP solution are, or I would say data warehousing solution, are we first design a database. Database using certain data models which is suitable for performing large volume of analysis. Like if we go for, uh, you know, like denormalized database. And we also go for multi-dimensional model which are suitable for OLAP solutions. Now, having an interface like a GUI or a CLI is not really required in our OLAP solutions since we are not performing any transactions. See, observe, see, requirement of OLAP solution and OLTP solution is completely different. OLTP system is actually used for running your day-to-day -day transactions, whereas your OLAP solution is actually used for running analysis. Now, in order to run analysis, we, we definitely need a report. But the point of concern is, how do we get data into this OLTP database? Sorry, this in, into this OLAP database from our OLTP database. Because since we do not have any GUI and we are not doing any transaction OLAP systems, 
in our OLAP system, so we will not have any data. Which is why most of our OLAP systems or OLAP solutions have an inbuilt ETL tool. Now, what is this ETL tool? ETL tool is actually a tool which is available in our OLAP system or OLAP solution to do extraction from our OL OLTP system, perform a transformation of really highly normalized database or system into a denormalized system and then load it. So any tool which is doing all these three functionalities of extraction, transformation and loading, that is actually known as an ETL tool. And we have to get data from various sources, right? It, it, those sources may be any. Now what those sources could be, we'll actually learn about them, right? So the, disk, the data is actually available from various source systems, right? Which is why we have ETL tool. But what new is, uh, you know, what, what is new in this? There are several vendors providing such solutions like this. There is nothing new. Even SAP is among one of such vendors, like SAP BW or BI is one of the popular data warehouse housing solution provided by SAP. But the problem is, as the time goes on, the volume of data increases. Rather, I should say, the volume of data actually multiplies. Because any customer having a database size of like 100 gig or 500 gig would definitely have his database size increased to like 1 TB or maybe like 2 TB. So it is actually multiplying. And performing analysis on such large volume of databases increases your analysis report execution time. And even proven products like SAP BW are actually facing performance issues. So it's not that nothing have been done to fix the to fix this performance issue. There are several techniques which are actually developed and designed by different vendors and which are actually applied to improve the performance. Like at data like at a database level we do indexing and table partitioning. And from SAP BI 7 onwards we have SAP you know where SAP has introduced this accelerator but we have achieved but we, what we could achieve actually, we could actually achieve a performance improvement by a one time or maybe like two time. Because a report which used to get executed in one hour started getting executed in like 50 or 55 minutes. It is barely a recognition, a recognizable performance or any performance improvement. See, imagine that you are a C-level guy in an organization or maybe like a vice president and running a report and previously you used to get that report in like 60 minutes and now you get it in 50 minutes or maybe like 55 minutes. You yourself can make a decision that whether it is a recognizable performance improvement or not. Until unless you are not able to get a report or until unless the performance is not improved drastically like you are getting a report in like 60, 60 minutes and now you're getting a report in like six seconds. That is a kind of performance any C-level or uh, vice presidents are actually looking for. Which is why we actually started thinking or I would say SAP started thinking for a better solution. But again, just by knowing the problem, we cannot overcome from it. So we need to understand the cause why there was a performance problem and why we were not able to provide drastic performance improvement to the customers. So the problem with these warehousing solutions and traditional RDBMS syst uh, systems, we used to store data into tables, which is actually nothing more than logical representation, but eventually data is getting stored in a data file, which is actually getting stored in disk. Now since table is just the logical representation of data, imagine that 
you execute you are you are actually executing a report which is running a billion of records for reporting purpose which is actually definitely a large volume based report so what system does is it reads data from the disk and loads data and loads data from hard drive to the memory then it goes to processor cache for processing and then based on reporting tool which is actually used data gets formatted and presented but if you observe closely almost 90% of time is actually consumed in just reading data from disk and uploading data into ram which also means that does not matter which warehousing solution you are actually using until unless you are not able to reduce this 90% of time which is nothing more than io from disk we cannot expect better performance and cannot meet customers requirement where he is expecting a drastic performance improvement of getting reports in just fraction of seconds just for a moment imagine that there is no hard disk and if we are able to somehow uh, make all of our data available in our ram or memory imagine the the kind of performance we can actually achieve we are actually saving almost 90% of time and we will not be achieving one or two time of improvement in our system or reporting but we are actually achieving hundreds of time of you know improvement in performance and imagine that we apply parallelism as well on top of it because it is a known fact that by parallel processing we can improve performance now imagine what kind of performance we will be achieving it will be like a thousands of time of performance improvement not all this it is just not you know whatever we just imagine it is actually not just a imagination it is now a solution which has been designed by sap which is what we call as a imdb solution in memory database solution in this in memory database we store our, our data primarily in our memory which is called as sap hana so now you can imagine why sap named it like this since here we are not speaking about one or two time of performance improvement we are talking about thousands of time of improvement that is why sap named it like hana high availability analytics but the most important thing in these kind of solution is that the most important role is played by the hardware but not by the solution itself which is why sap have partnered with several hardware partners like dell cisco fujitsu and several others you can find a complete list of sap partner to run this sap hana database in sap hana hardware directory now it is a different case if customer cannot afford the appliance itself that's a different case but in that case customer can go for solution you know a, uh, for a cloud solution for which we do not need to bother as of now because we learn about it as we continue with our session so sap hana is a combination of both hardware and software through which high performance actually achieved but from whatever we discussed regarding imdb 
generally most of us will have a question or maybe a concern that if data is stored in memory then what happens if there is a power failure or like fluctuation or if system goes down we know that data in memory is volatile and the moment system goes down all data from memory is gone but remember what i said the primary storage of data is ram it is not the only source of data technically a copy of data is stored into hard disk which we call as persistent persistent storage not only that our hana database have different facilities like backup recovery disaster recovery high availability functionality right all these functionalities are available which also means that hana can be used as a full fledged database not only this SAP didn't came up with this IMDB sort of solution just by theoretically. They have done their own research as well. IDC being a separate part in SAP itself, they did their own analysis. Also, at the same time, there is an analysis and survey done by Solon Management Survey and EMC. Now, what does this IDC research did? it this idc estimated that worldwide digital content added up to 487 billion gigabyte in 2009 observe it was this research was actually done in way back in 2009 they predicted that this worldwide digital data would actually double in next 18 months and after every every 18 months it double it'll you know double like that that only so it will be like a stack of dvds all the way from moon and back so you can imagine the kind of data what customer have and you can imagine the kind of requirement which is going to be there in the market because customer having such huge databases and such beautiful size of databases cannot expect such kind of poor performance from uh, which we can uh, which we actually experience in our traditional databases but what customers can do if sap offers a database as solution lies on the solutions which are offered by sap to its customers can we expect any end to end solution with database like hana So the simple answer is no, because Hana is a database, and we can actually store our data into our database. We cannot expect a complete end-to-end -end solution. But observe, success of the solution lies in solutions what SAP is offering to its customers. Because if SAP is saying I'm offering a high-performance database, and customer goes for different companies for GUI and reporting, then it will be very difficult for customers. due to compatibility support perspective license perspective and moreover ex you know expectation of all customers from sap is to provide a complete end to end solution which sap is offering since last 3 decades so our interest should be in should not be in just learning what is hana but what end to end solutions sap is offering to customers which also means what all type of deployment solutions we can get in customers landscape so understanding different deployment scenario is very much important so up until now we actually discussed about what is this hana and what was the need of solutions like hana and now we will be discussing on different deployment scenarios which are actually offered by sap so the first deployment scenario which is offered by sap is sap hana as data warehousing solution which is actually something new 
and very effective. Popularly known as HANA modeling and implementation scenario. So as we discuss, for any data warehousing solution, we need a database, which is HANA database in our case. And once we have a database, we need some ETL tool, which are capable of extracting data from different sources, because data can be available in various sources like files, standalone databases, application, web services. And SAP is offering different ETL tools like data service. This is actually one of the ETL tool which is offering, which SAP is offering with our HANA database. It was previously known as BOTS up until your, you know, up until 4.1. Replication technologies like SLT, SAP landscape transformation, DXC, direct extractor connection, and SRS, Sybase replication server. Either we can go with one ETL tool or maybe like combination, depending upon the deployment scenario as customer will have. And definitely we need report. So SAP is not providing any reporting tool, default reporting tool with HANA licensing. And the simple reason for it is reporting requirement varies from companies to company. Most of company use their own local reporting tool like Excel or any other. So, SAP do not want to restrict customers to just use the, their, their provided reporting tool and not to use any other reporting tool, which is why SAP is not providing any re default reporting tool. So customers can actually use any reporting tool which they actually want, like they can use Excel or like Tableau. This was the first solution which SAP started with. Any new customer like you know can also go for another deployment scenario that is SAP BW. From SAP BW 7.3 onward, customers can actually use SAP BW with HANA database. This is a kind of scenario wherein customer is really concerned about performance. And which is why he's going with HANA database. Whereas this, whereas for the customers who are actually willing to use any other database, they can actually, they can, they can use any other database as well. Huh? Using HANA database is not mandatory if customers are using SAP BW 7.3. But from 7.5 onwards, SAP have provided this BW powered on HANA specifically, which is designed to run on HANA database. Now, these are the two exclusive solutions provided by SAP for new customers. Now, since we know that there are seven, there are nearly like 15, over 15,000 customers with SAP, so SAP cannot actually stop thinking about their existing customers. So as a solution to this, SAP, we can also come across with a different deployment scenario where customers are using SAP BI 7.0 with any traditional database, and they're experiencing this performance issue during their execution of reports. So they can actually upgrade their BI system from 7.0 to 7.3, BW 7.3 with their existing database, and then they can actually migrate to BW 7.3 with HANA database. This is another solution for existing customer. We can also use SAP with its proven products like ERP, CRM, SCM. We can also use HANA database with these uh, proven products. Now another wrong notion which several people have is HANA is for big customers. But that is wrong. I'm not sure if you're aware about SAP product which is SAP B1. Which is for small customers. 
But how can a customer afford HANA where appliance itself is too expensive? That is actually a point of concern. So for the customer who can actually afford, small customers who can actually afford these uh, appliance, they can actually go for this B1. Whereas for small customers who cannot afford these expensive appliance, we can have another deployment scenario like SAP HANA on cloud. So customer can actually go for AWS or HCP or like HEC. So HCP is HANA cloud platform, which is for the customers who are actually interested for developing web-based applications running on cloud. And HEC stands for HANA Enterprise Cloud, where the customer can have their, you know, uh, would like to run SAP's proven products like ERP, CRM, or SCM on cloud. Which is why having an impression that SAP is about big customer is totally wrong. Now there is another deployment scenario that is SAP HANA RDS, which is a rapid deployment solution where SAP offers some specific solutions which are suitable for specific requirement like models, reports, or dashboard. Customer looking for these kind of specific solution, they can actually uh, buy a package and deploy in their system with HANA database and they can actually use it. This is another kind of solution which SAP is offering, RDS. Now another very important platform which is completely new with HANA and which is actually very unique and it is currently not offered by any other any other uh, database is HANA Access Extended Application Services. Here, SAP HANA is the only database to offer these services, where HANA acts as a platform where we can use lightweight applications like mobile application, web-based application, .NET or Java applications. And we can use access platform, access as a platform. Since it works as a lightweight application server. And for that, customers can actually use different other languages like .NET, Java, HTML5, RDL. RDL is something which is uh, launched by SAP specifically for, in order to understand the requirement, I would say, of uh, having another language by SAP. Let's go back into past. See, somewhere like some three decades back when we had only our ABAP systems, SAP used to have only ABAP language, which was specifically designed for our SAP's ABAP systems. Now, as the time go, went on, requirement changed. If we want to have our data available over internet or browser, We used to have WebDIN Pro based requirements. So different language for different platform. And now we have another requirement nowadays that customers want to have their data available on mobile devices. So we cannot have multiple languages for multiple platforms that will actually make our ABAPers uh, life really hell. Sorry for using this term, but it'll be difficult for ABAPers, which is why SAP came up with this river definition language, where which will be, which can be used for one single language for multiple platforms. And the last deployment scenario, which we, which is actually available as of now is SAP S4 HANA also known as Business Suite for HANA. 
This SAP S4 HANA is actually designed to take 200% benefit out of HANA database. But this business suite is still under innovate, innovation and uh, not all applications are actually available in S4 HANA. Customer who want to go for this S4 HANA can actually first look for what all applications are actually available with S4 HANA and then probably they can decide whether they, they should go for S4 HANA or not. The reason we talked about all these deployment scenarios is not just in-memory computing, but a lot beyond that. And by understanding what SAP has in their mind, we can understand that future lies in SAP HANA. For those who are not aware about different cloud models, specifically for scenarios where the customer want to reduce down cost of managing their infrastructure, let me actually give you a brief idea that customers who can afford their in-house data center, we call it as on-premises, where customer will is actually responsible for managing networking, storage, servers, virtualization, operating system, middleware, runtime, data and application, all these are been managed by a customer itself. And along with all these things, there are cost of licensing, managing and all. So managing an in-house data center is way costly, which is why this cloud concept came into picture. So there are three, primarily three service models which are actually available in cloud and almost all of the cloud vendors are primarily IaaS vendors. So the different service models which are actually available are infrastructure as a service, which we actually know technically as IaaS, platform as a service, PaaS, and software as a service, that is SaaS. These are the technical jargon. Probably you know about these technical jargons, but for those who do not know, let me explain. So IaaS is actually a service model where the cloud vendor is actually managing the networking, storage, servers, and all the virtualization regarding things. And customers just need to bother about operating system, middleware, runtime, data, and application things. Now scenario where cloud vendor is actually managing everything other than application and data is actually a platform as a service where customer need to just bother about its application and its uh, data. A classic example for platform as a service is Salesforce, whereas we can use SAP as well in platform as a service scenario. Now there is another soft, you know, service model which is available in cloud is software as a service. Now in order to understand this particular service model, let's take an example of go to meeting or maybe like uh, most of us have our uh, accounts in you know, our Gmail account or maybe like a Hotmail account or Yahoo mail account. So whenever you are actually storing any of your data in your Google Drive or whenever you are actually using a Gmail, you're not doing any sort of application installation, you're not doing any sort of development and you don't need to really bother about any, you know, if anything goes to the software, right? You don't need to open a high priority ticket and start troubleshooting that particular part. It's all been managed by the application or the cloud vendor. So these are actually the classic examples of software as a service.
So any question up until now? I hope uh, I have tried to make this training session as clear as I can. But in case you have any questions or doubts, you can actually reach out to me at my contact details, which I'll be sharing at the end of the slide. Or you can raise your hand and ask your questions once our training session is over. So whenever a customer want to implement HANA, or I would say whenever a customer want to go for HANA, what does customer need to do when, whenever he's actually willing or intention, intending to go to HANA? So as of now, SAP is offering its latest version of SAP HANA, that is SAP HANA 2.0 with SPS 3. Now on this slide, I'm using SPS 2 because I'm actually taking this N minus 1 strategy, right? So this, what is this SPS? So SPS actually stands for Support Package Stack. Now the support package consists of corrections, enhancement, and some new functionality. Now whenever these support packages are actually bundled together, they are called as, as support package stacks. So SAP HANA 1.0 SPS 3 was the first was the first SAP HANA release which was available for general availability in November 2011. Now by general availability we mean to say that the product was available without any restrictions. And from there onwards SAP made a trend of their own of releasing it's SPS after every six months. So for your convenience, I have actually added, yeah, I've done this particular calculation for you guys, right? And the latest SPS which is available is SAP HANA 2.0, SPS 3, revision 33, which was latest available on 1.10.2018. So after releasing their SPS 3 in November 2011, SAP came up with their SPS 4 in April 2012, which was actually one of the significant SPS from SAP. And then they actually came up with SPS 5 in December 2012. Now here some licensing changes were actually made and we will actually discuss on that what those licensing changes were and this is where there was an introduction of SAP Business Suite. After that they came up with this SPS 6 in June 2013 where a lot of enhancements were made for modeling and then SPS 7 in December 13 where SAP introduced RDL River Definition Language which can be used as one language for all platform. Also SAP introduced a new concept of transport management system through lifecycle management feature. And then SPS 8 in May 14, where a lot of administrative enhancements were actually provided. SPS 9 in November 2014 introduced, uh, where SAP introduced HANA cockpit and also came up with multi-container database. And thereafter, we actually came up with this SPS 10 in July 15, SPS 11 in November 15, SPS 12 in May 2016, 
and 2.0 SPS0 in November 16. Now, here in 2.0 SPS0, SAP made HANA cockpit separate from SAP standard installation of our SAP HANA database. And thereafter, SAP came up with this SPS1 and SPS2 in April 2017 and July 2017. So SAP had certain new features which SAP wanted to make available for general availability. So SAP launched, you know, did an early release of this SPS. And similarly, they had some new enhancement for SPS3 as well, which is why you can observe that SPS3 was also introduced by SAP a bit early. So now, so th this is actually uh, the SAP HANA release strategy, which SAP followed up until now. So let's understand something about licensing, what, SAP, what uh, customers will get when SAP when when customer actually goes for HANA. So whenever a customer goes for HANA, he always gets two type of licenses. One is platform edition and one is enterprise edition. So in, the, in order, we'll actually kind of, you know, discuss this particular licensing concept in our next session. We'll have almost like two sessions specifically for licensing, which is why I'm not actually starting this licensing point in our today's session. So if you have any question or concern, you can actually start uh, raising your hand and uh, you can actually, for those who are actually willing to enroll for SAP HANA administration training, they can actually reach out to me at my contact details mentioned on the screen.